We're now ready to turn our attention to the study and analysis of bipolar junction transistors, or BJTs. My name is Lee Brinton, and I'm an electrical engineering instructor at Salt Lake Community College. We have here a picture of the first transistor that uh, was documented as uh, the first documented operational transistor. It was designed at Bell Laboratories back in 1947. It is a bipolar junction transistor, and as we'll see, these uh, there are three terminals here with a collector, an emitter, and a base terminal. As we study these transistors, we'll start first of all with an overall study of the structure and the operations of them. We'll develop large and small signal models of the transistors. We'll talk about methods of biasing these transistors into an operational linear range. We'll then look at a number of different common transistor configurations and how they can be used to provide linear amplification. We'll then wrap up with a study of the overall or the complete um, circuit response, including both the DC and the AC or small signal analysis. There are two basic types of BJTs, the NPN transistor and the PNP transistor. Each of them are made of three different areas on a silicon substrate, consisting of the emitter, the collector, and the base. This, is, this structure effectively has two back-to-back -back PN junctions. The NPN transistor consists of two heavily doped N-type regions known as the emitter and the collector. They're separated by a relatively lightly doped P area, and the, the width of that or the thickness of that P region is also relatively small. So as you can see, we have effectively two back-to-back -back, um, PN junctions, a PN junction formed between the base, the P-type base, and the N-type emitter, and also a junction between the P-type base and the N-type collector. Similarly, in the NPN transistor, you have a P-type, a heavily doped P-type emitter and collector, separated by a relatively narrow and relatively lightly doped N-type um, base region. In the NPN transistor, negatively charged electrons act as the majority charge carriers and flow from the emitter through the base into the collector. This is the symbol for the NPN transistor. The emitter terminal is noted with an arrowhead pointing in the direction of conventional current flow. Thus, although electrons flow from the emitter through the base to the collector, the conventional current is referenced flowing from the higher voltage collector to the emitter. The PNP transistor is the dual or the counter image of the NPN transistor. As we've already pointed out, what is N-type in the NPN transistor is P-type in the PNP transistor, and what is N-type doping in the PNP transistor is P-type doping in the NPN transistor. In the PNP transistor, holes serve as the majority carrier and flow from the P-doped emitter across the narrow, lightly doped N base and into the P-type collector. Once again, in the symbol for it, the emitter is noted with an arrowhead. And again, the arrowhead points in the direction of conventional current flow. Since conventional current flow from flow, since conventional current flow flows from a higher voltage to a lower voltage, the NPN transistor is typically drawn with the collector up on the page and the emitter down, so the current, as referenced, conventional current would flow from top to bottom. Conversely, the PNP transistor is typically drawn with the emitter up, again with the arrowheads pointing in the direction of current flow, and the collector at the bottom of the page. In both instances, conventional current flow flows in the direction of the arrowhead, and when and drawn as shown, flows from the top to the bottom, from the higher voltage to lower voltage. We'll start by looking at the operation of the NPN transistor. In this diagram, you'll see the three regions, the N-type emitter, a relatively narrow and a lightly doped P-type region, and then the heavily doped 
end type collector. So both the emitter and the collector have relatively high concentrations of dopants, whereas the base has a relatively light doping concentration. And again, the width of the base is relatively small. Once again, in the NPN transistor, electrons are the majority carrier and flow from the emitter to the collector. As we analyze this device, we're going to be explicit when we talk about charge carriers and current. Remember that electrons flow from a lower voltage to a higher voltage, but conventional current flows from the higher voltage to the lower voltage. As can be seen in this figure, the NPN transistor consists of the three regions that we've already pointed out. With no external voltages applied to them, both PN junctions, the PN junction between the emitter and the base, and the PN junction between the base and the collector, um, experience the built-in junction voltage of approximately 0.7 volts. There are two external voltages applied in this circuit here. One voltage referenced with the higher voltage at the base and the lower voltage at the emitter that we will refer to as VBE. And a second external voltage, VCB, which has the higher voltage attached to the collector and the lower voltage at the base. Suffici sufficiently large positive values for these two voltages will forward bias the base emitter junction. So VBE forward biases this base emitter PN junction and this voltage here, VCB, with a higher voltage on the collector than on the base, reverse biases the base to collector junction. Schematically, we have the symbol for the NPN transistor with the collector, the base, and the emitter. The base to emitter junction is effectively a diode or a PN junction facing in this direction, and the base to collector is effectively a PN junction opposing it. So you have back-to-back -back PN junctions or back-to-back -back diodes. And as we've said, under normal operating conditions, the base to emitter junction, or at least in the normal operating conditions that we'll be talking about initially, the base to emitter junction will be forward biased, and the base to collector junction will be reverse biased. Let's turn our attention to the flow of carriers in these three areas. And again, in an NPN transistor, the carriers, the majority carrier, is the electron, which will be flowing from the emitter through the base to the collector. Under these conditions, the external applied voltages that we've described, electrons are emitted from the emitter into the lightly doped P-type region. Because of the relatively low concentration of holes in the base, a small percentage of these electrons will recombine with holes in the base, represented by this arrow showing meant to represent electrons that make it from the emitter to the base but then recombine in the base. But the vast majority of the electrons that enter the base from the emitter are uh, migrate across the base and are then swept by this reverse biased voltage into the collector. This reverse bias establishes a depletion region within the base where there are no unbound electrons, or no unbound carriers of any type, neither holes nor electrons. And so the electrons then are free, based upon the biasing voltage, to flow from the lower voltage base across the junction into the higher voltage collector. In addition to the electron current that's flowing from the base, or from the emitter into the base, there is a relatively small component of holes in the base, minority carriers flowing into the emitter from the base that adds to the overall um, current crossing the PN junction here. But this whole current, because of the light doping concentrations in the base, this whole current is relatively small. This idea that electrons in the base can, can continue across the reverse biased base collector junction may seem counterintuitive at first and deserves a little more attention. Because of the external voltage applied across the base collector junction, it is reverse biased, as we've already pointed out, with a depletion region. This reverse bias prevents holes. So given the bias, there is no hole or minimal hole diffusion going from the 
P base to the N collector. This reverse bias prevents whole current from flowing from the base to the collector. But the polarity of that voltage, minus to plus, is such that electrons that make it into the base are then swept across that voltage gradient from the base into the collector. Thus, the forward biased base to emitter junction injects electrons into the base, and the reverse biased base collector voltage carries them across the base and into the collector. As VBE increases, as the voltage from the base to the emitter becomes more positive, more electrons find their way into the base and are swept into the collector. VBE then becomes the controller of the openness of the transistor for current to flow through it. We'll see later, but we can intuitively understand at this point, that the current flowing through the, through the transistor will be directly related to the current flowing across the base emitter junction, and it is ex exponentially dependent upon VBE. We know from previous, our previous study of the PN junction that the current across the PN junction, I, is equal to I sub S, some saturation current, E to the VBE divided by VT, where VBE is the voltage across the junction, and VT is the thermal voltage.